morning. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father God. Mm. Mm. Shake your walk. Good morning, good morning, good morning. See y'all coming in there fast. Good morning. Mm, you're good. Good morning. You too. Mm. How y'all doing this morning? Good morning. Hey, Sharon and Tanisha and Tanisha and Hoop Love and Tina and Tamara and Denisha and Nisi. Good morning. Good morning, Nicole. Good morning. Hey, Miss Vicky. My tea. Y'all know I ain't had coffee in five days, right? <laughs> My God. <laughs> thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Fifth day of this consecration. I'm so grateful to what God has done this week. So, so grateful. So grateful for the testimonies that have been rolling in. Um, thank you guys so much for encouraging me. For those of you who have been coming in and sharing with me what God has been doing for you this week. Or just through this ministry within itself. Just what has been going on through this ministry within itself has been just amazing to hear um, you guys share that. And to know that he's um, using me. Because <laughs> um, I'm just the vessel. I'm just the person that said, you know what, Lord, I'll serve you with all my heart. I'll serve you with everything in me i will give you my all <laughs> i'll surrender all and absolutely everything to you like absolutely everything to you and that's just a decision that i made um somebody was asking me the other day like how do you do it and how did you get to this point and i simply told them um i just got to this place where I made a decision that, um, or I figured out I could not survive like without him. I could not survive at the place that I was trying to survive. Like I was trying to survive, but I could not survive without him. And once I got to the position where I couldn't survive without him, I just had to go like never before. Um, good morning. Welcome to Coffee and Conversations. I am Lakeisha Johnson, if this is your very first time. And we have been in a position this week of five, five days of prayer, five days of prayer. I've got to upload um, yesterday's video to the YouTube. Um, just five days of prayer, five days before God, five days laying our hearts before God, five days of putting our desires before God, five days of hearing from God, um, of dedicating, of consecrating ourselves before him and just getting ourselves in the position of, of understanding of, and of knowing and of believing and communing with him like never before. And I have watched the power of God move this week in so many lives, like so many testimonies. I told my uh, ministry team last ne week we were uh, meeting and discussing just 2018 and what we wanted Pillow Talk to look like and what Coffee and Conversations was going to look like and the Saturday devotionals. And we were just talking as a ministry team last night. Um, I work with some amazing women of God. Um, this is our ministry. And I tell them I'm always our. It's not just mine. It's our ministry. And we were talking last night about just everything and watching the power of God move when you simply get out the way and allow God 
to do what he needs to do through you. Um, and you just become the willing vessel. You just say, here I am, Lord. I surrender all my gifts. I surrender all my talents. I'm surrendering my life to you. I don't want this even to look like what I thought um, LMJ wanted this to look like. And I am watching him invade my life. The small places, even the small places, and take over. And I just want to say thank you. Thank you for logging in. Thank you for being faithful. Thank you for sharing the devotionals. You don't have to share them. Thank you for sharing the devotionals. Thank you for putting the word out there. Thank you for stretching yourself beyond limits. Thank you for those of you that have been obedient and sowed seeds into this ministry. I promise you the Lord is going to reward your faithfulness. I I'm just so grateful for those of you that that have just that are just walking walking this journey with me. There are some of you that have been on here since the beginning, faithfully, faithfully connecting, faithfully praying for me. And I just want to say thank you this morning. I just wanted to take the opportunity and chance to tell you, thank you this morning, man, Miss Vicky, when we get out his way, he can have his way. When we get out his way, he can have this way. When we when we just make a decision that it's not about our will, it's not about this flesh, it's not about this worldly way, it's not about these things that we thought we should have. It's not about this worldly perception. It's not even about it being for our glory. You know what I'm saying? Like for so many, we want, we want our name to be great. We want to be positioned. And he's just, he calls us, by name, like he calls us by name. He calls us by name. So I just want to thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We are going to get started. I told you we've been praying all week and Monday we started praying for, um, we just started this thing. We started praying and we started with health and we went to the desires of our heart. And yesterday we began to pray for peace and how important our peace was. And God showed us the tug of war that we had been in with him. And he just simply said, if you will release this thing to us, if you will release this thing to us, then I promise you, you will do a great work. I hear my grandson in the back. It's so sweet to hear his voice. A lot of people don't even know I'm a nini. Um, and so I heard his voice in the back and it just made me smile. It just made me smile. That's see, that's that's the seed of my seed back there. That's the seed of my seed. And he didn't come into this world um like he should have. His parents weren't married, but he's still my grandson, and I call him by name. That's Zayden Isaiah. That's my grandson. That's seed of my seed. See, if you don't understand that, like that's seed of my seed. That's my fruit. That's my fruit producing fruit. That's my fruit. That's my fruit producing fruit. That's my heritage. That's my inheritance. And so I call him by name. Like I call him by name, just like God called me by name. I call him by name. And so when I heard his voice, it stirred something up in me because that's the seed of my seed back there. That's the seed of my seed. That's the fruit of my fruit back there. And I call him by name. He is actually the third of my grandsons. I have Shiloh and I have Lyric and then I have Zayden and then I have a new grandson that is due this December. All grandsons. And so my inheritance, my lineage, I call him by name. My God, I call him by name. I call them forth all the time. Those are Nini's babies. Yeah, those that's seed of my seed. See, Sometimes we get in a position and when our kids produce babies and they may produce them at a time that doesn't seem right and and they may do it not out necessarily in God's will, but that's still your heritage, that's still your inheritance. That's my inheritance. And I'm laying up an inheritance, right, for my children and my children's children. See, that's evidence that I exist on this earth. That's part of my lineage. That's part of my history. 
I'm telling you. And so I call them by name. So when I hear their voice, something stirs in my spirit. It's like, oh my God, that's my grand, that's my grandson. Like that's my grandson right now. That seed of my seed, that's my grandson. So I call them by name. And there's a scripture that I want to share. Man, Valerie, our gifts and our blessings. Come on, Miss Vicky, seven grandsons, all grandsons. That's our gifts and our blessings. A child is a gift and a blessing. It's a, it's a gift and it's a blessing. Like a child is a gift and a blessing. And I call them by name. Like I call them by name. I'm so excited by what God is doing. It's so, I'm so excited. I'm so excited. I want to give you the scripture today and I'm just going to share a little bit of my testimony with you and then we're going to pray over our children today like we're going to pray we're praying that God move in the lives of our kids our children are our inheritance and I don't care what they've done I don't care how bad it's been I don't care how um crazy it's been these are our children, like these are our children and we have to get in the gap. And the scripture that the Lord brought to me today was Isaiah 43 and one. And it simply says, but now this is what the Lord says. He who created you, Jacob, he who formed you, Israel, do not fear for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name and you are mine. Besides marriage, parenting is probably one of the most difficult things that we do. One of the most hard things that we do. Like it's, it's probably one of the most difficult places that we go because we raise these children. We have an idea of what we want them to look like. We have an idea of, of where we want them to go. We have an idea of what we want them to be. And, and God is simply shown me something. And when I took this resolve in my heart, it probably blessed me like never before. My children that God had given to me really don't belong to me. And as soon as I got that idea, and as soon as that I got that concept in my head that I was just the conduit to get them here on the earth, I took some of the responsibility of parenting off myself. And I'm going to tell you why you're like, what do you mean you took, I took some of the blame. I pushed that over on God because he just used me to get them here. He just used me to get him in. He needed my DNA. He needed their dad's DNA to fasten, to fashion this little kid out for me. He just needed to use me to get them here. Like he just needed to use me to get here. And when I got that in my head, that they really didn't belong to me, I'm telling you, there was a resolve that came in my heart and there was a resolve that came in my life and said, you know what? This joker don't even belong to me. It doesn't, this joker doesn't even belong to me. This ain't even this. And I have all sons. I have five sons. They doesn't, they don't even belong. They don't even belong to me. I'm just the conduit to bring them in to this world. Now there are some instructions that the Lord specifically gave me to raise my sons. Like he gave me some instructions to protect their environment, to raise them as king. That's why the word says train up a child in the way that they should go. Like they, in the way that they should go, like training up our kids in the way that we want to see them successful. I've taught a whole thing about training your kids up. I did a series on raising boys. So training up our child in the way that she, we should go, right? And if we've trained them up in the way that we should go, then even if they stray, even if they depart, I promise you at some point, they're going to come back to the place in which you've trained them. Now, let's be real. If you haven't been the best parents or you haven't been the best su successful parent, then what I'm going to admonish you to do is even now just repent, <laughs> repent, repent. If you know, if you repent, if you know you've exposed your 
kids to some things you had absolutely no business exposing them to. Repent if you know that you haven't been the best. Repent of that. Ephesians 6 says, fathers, do not exasperate your children. We can ask them to, uh, some of us haven't always been honorable. Some of us haven't led the best life and example before our kids. Some of us haven't been in position to be what we were supposed to be for our kids. Go on and repent of that now. Like go on and repent of that now. Be honest. Be honest. I, w I wasn't the best parent at first. I was an 18 year old turning 19 year old mom with a little boy. I had a baby out of sequence, out of timing. I was not the best parent at first. I was still growing up. I was still growing up. I was still a kid myself and I shifted into becoming a parent. I wasn't focused. I wasn't the best parent. And so I had, I had to be honest with myself and I had to come back into the position and repent for not always being the best parent. And I want you to take ownership this morning because can I tell you something? If you will repent now, I'm telling you what the Holy Spirit is telling me. If you will repent now, if you will take this opportunity and chance and repent for not being the best parent, the Lord will turn some stuff for you. He will turn some stuff for you, but you have to be accountable. You have to get in the position and you have to repent. You have to be the parent that says, you know what? I'm going to repent of my wayward ways so that my kids can get in place. Yeah, Kim, me too. I'm repenting so that my kids, so that I, you know how a generational curse gets broken? It gets broken by repentance. You know how a generational curse gets broken? It gets broken by repentance. So if we're going to let these prayers be effective, then we as parents need to get in position and repent for not being the best parent that we were supposed to be. So I'm putting my repentance out there. And I've actually, I've actually went to my kids myself and said to them, look, I wasn't always the best parent. My ways weren't always in the ways of the Lord. And so I'm going to repent right now because the word of God says that I'm not supposed to exasperate you. That's what it says in the word. The word of God says that I'm not supposed to do this. And so I had to go to them and say, I'm sorry for the moments that I was not a godly parent. I was not the best parent parent that I should have been. I was operating out of a worldly knowledge, not a biblical perspective. And I need you to forgive me. And I'm going to work on being a better parent to you, even in your later life. You don't. So right now, take the time. And even if you're somebody that thinks you've been a perfect parent, even if you, per, if you, if you think you've been a perfect parent, I want you to ask the Lord to search your heart to show you any door that you have open to your kids, any door that you have had open, any ways that you've raised them that have not been conducive to what the Lord has said. Cause these are your gifts that he gave you. These are just your gifts. He, he gave you these gifts. These are the, these are your gifts that he gave you. And since he gave you this gift and you were not as careful with the gift that he gave you, mm, mm, that you were not as careful with the gift that he gave you, that you repent for not handling his gift properly. And for some of that, that that's going to be sore. And some of that's going to be hard. I'm telling you, but I'm telling you just this morning, take this opportunity and repent first so that when we begin to pray over your children, we can see a shift occur. A shift will occur because the generational curses are broken off your life. A shift will recur. I sh I'm telling you, a shift will occur because the generational bro have been broken off your life, off your life, off your life. But you as a parent, there are some things that you have probably done or not done that you haven't even realized and you need to repent so that you can be in place. That's, that's the first, yeah, creating me a clean heart. That's it. Renewing me a right spirit, Lord God. Allow me to be the, the parent. Even now, even if my kid is 18, even if my kid is 25, allow me to do the work now. Because can I tell you something? If the curse is broken off you, it gets broken off them. Then we ain't got to worry about these generational curses occurring with our grandkids. I told my 
my kids, it's some things that the buck is going to stop here. It's going to stop here. And so even as I have adult children, because my oldest son is 25 and then 23 and then 20, even as I have adult children that I'm still able to be the wisdom, the guidance that they need in they, that this place in their life. So we're going to start it with a, a, a repentant spirit so that we can move into what we need to. And, and, and my second thing is to you, don't, don't give up. Like, don't give up on your wayward child. I want to admonish you this morning to call them by name. I want you to admonish them this morning to call them by name. I need you to call them and not... Now, I'm not just talking about their birth name. I'm talking about call them by the name of what you want to see them. See, Jacob was, ish, he was, he was different. He was, he was, he was Jacob and God called him by his new name, his covenant name, which was Israel. He called him Israel. He called him by name. He called him by name. And so the next thing I need you to do, I need you to start calling them forth by their name, not the birth name that you give them, but the thing that you want to see them, call them by name, call them ruler, call them king, call them queen, call them by name, call them man of God, call them woman of God, call them husband, call them wife. Like I want you to call them by name. You got to start call. I don't care what they, how wayward they are. I don't care what they're doing. We're not going to call them by what it seems. We're going to call them by name. We're going to call them by name. I need you to learn how to call them by their name. I, I'm serious about that. Call, call them name. We're going to call them back in today. You're going to call, you're not going to talk about the problem anymore. You're not going to pray the problem anymore. You're not going to talk about what they're doing wrong anymore. You're going to call them by their name. You're going to call them as you hope to see them. You're going to call them as you hope to see them. I need you to start calling them by name. Some of you have been spending way too much time on the problem with your kids and God has given you a solution. You need to call them by their purpose. And if you don't know the purpose of your child, pray and ask the Lord to show you your child's purpose. Like show them your purpose and call them by their name call them by their name. I, I'm telling you, you got to call them. You got to call them out by name. Every morning, I'm, it's going to take a dedication. Start calling them by their name. Write, write out all their attributes, all their successful things, and call them by, I call men of God. These are men of God in my house. I'm not raising no pimps, no players, no hustlers. I call them by their name. I call them, I even refer to my sons as yes, sir. I call them by their name. And you ask the Lord to give you the name to call them. You call them by their name. Stop calling them by their problem. Some of y'all been spending too much time calling them by their problem. Don't call them by their problem anymore. You need to call them by their name. Call them by their name. Call them out. Call them by their purpose. Call them by their future. I speak that my sons will never be in debt. Call them by their future. Call forth their wives. Call forth their husbands. Call forth their purpose. But you've got to call them by their name. We cannot haphazardly parent even anymore. Even if you're a step parent, even if you're a step parent, you call that child by their name. That's your baby too. When you cut covenant with their parents, they became their baby too. Call them by their name. Call your stepkid. I don't care what their parent looks like. You be the conduit. You be the difference and you call them by their name. 
My third thing for you this morning, some of y'all are parenting lazy. Y'all some lazy parents. And I'm sorry, this is what the Holy Spirit spoke to me. And this is what we said. You are not checking their technical devices. You are not involved. You are letting them spend too much time on this. You're letting them spend too much time on the computers. You're not involved and you have got to be involved. Because can I tell you something? Can I tell you something? The enemy... The enemy is waiting on you to be a lazy parent. He wants you to not be involved. He wants you to not know what they're doing so that he can get in and present an opportunity to them that doesn't line up with what their purpose is. I'm telling you from my own mistakes. I'm telling you from my own mistakes. When Jermaine died, I was not watching Josiah properly. I was not watching Josiah properly and somebody sent him something that did not even line up with my house. And I had to repent first and then deal with this spirit that was trying to get in my house. But it came because at that moment in my life, I was being a lazy parent. I was being a lazy parent. I was trusting too much. My eyes were not open because he was such a good child. He was such a good child. He was such an amazing child. He was so respectful. His grades were so good that I wasn't checking his devices and things that were around him. And so I had to get my lazy butt up and become an assertive parent and get involved. Like I had to get involved. No, you can't just watch anything on TV. Let me see who you texting. Let me see what's in your phone. I have to have the password to your phone. I have to have access to your social media. I need to know who your friends are. No, you just not going anywhere with anybody. No, nobody can just hang out at this house. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Absol I don't care if you don't like me right now. I wasn't meant to be your best friend anyway. I'm meant to be your mama. I, I don't care. I don't care. I don't care if you don't like me right now. I'm not meant to be your best friend. I'm meant to be your mama. That's who I'm meant to be. And if I'm going to be the mama that God called me to be, I can't afford to be a lazy parent. Like I can't afford to. And some of y'all got kids and they look picture perfect. And I'm telling you, you look, they look picture perfect and your kids will have stuff going on behind the scenes that you don't even know that they're doing. They so slick with it. They so slick with it. I've been mentoring and working with kids for way too long. They so slick with it. You won't even know what they're doing. Snapchat. Think about how you use Snapchat. Think about how you use Snapchat. So if you use Snapchat a certain way, you think they not using Snapchat a certain way? Come on now. You, I'm praying today that your eyes be open, that your blinders be off. Because if your eyes are not open and your blinders are not off, you're going to put yourself in a position for your kid to be an onslaught for the enemy to come in. And some of us have used this excuse this too long. Well, that's the way I was. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if that's the way that I was. It does, it's not okay for your kids to be contrary to where you want to see them. It don't matter. It don't matter that's the way you are. It don't matter they're just being kids. It don't matter that they're just being teens. Then you're trying to figure out late. Well, I can't. I cannot prevent them from everything. You can't prevent them from everything. That is your truth. But what you can do is sow the right seeds in them so that this stuff can come up later. So that this stuff can come up later. You cannot prevent them from everything. That's why prayer is essential. But you can sow these seeds in them so that they can come up later. Then my next thing I'm going to say to you is you better make sure you're being the example. Because they looking and watching. You got to make sure you be. You cannot ask them to do anything that you don't do. The motto in my house is when my kids are caught doing something they don't have any business doing. The motto in my house is do you see mother do that? And then the question is no mother doesn't do that. And so then if mother doesn't do it you don't do it. I lead by example. I And when I don't. I repent and I explain to them what happened. I lead, but they're going to do whatever I do. I'm giving them permission. They're going to do whatever I do. They're going to do whatever I do. 
Every, whatever I do, I leave. Has mother, have you seen mother do that? That's how I hold them accountable. Would God be pleased with your actions? And so those are just some things that I'm telling you. The assignment on our, the assignment for our children, the enemy is coming after our children strong. He's coming after them strong. He's trying to get them to abort their future. He wants them to abort their future. We got kings. We got queens. We got rulers. We got people that are supposed to be movie stars, models. We got people that are supposed to be out here impacting the world. My next thing to you is pray as we're praying, ask the Lord to reveal to you your child's purpose. Out of my five sons are all created different. They don't all look the same. They don't all act the same. Ask them to, to reveal your purpose. You need to know what this kid, this kid may not be purpose for what you see. My mom wanted me to be a supermodel, um, homecoming queen. That wasn't what was in me. Physically, great, but that's not what was in me. Ask the Lord to show you what your child is gifted with because your child could be frustrated and not doing well because you're trying to put them in a box and they need to live outside that box. They need to get outside that box. That's not the box they want to live in. That's not where they were created and that's not how God created them. You got to ask God. To show you that. And then guess what? You got to get out God's way. Like you have to get out of God's way. You got to get out of his way. He's trying to do something. He needs you out of his way. These are only your kids to manage. They belong to him. They belong to him. They belong to him. They don't belong to you. They belong to you. him. So we're getting ready to pray. I want you to write your kids' names down. I want you to list them if you want to. I want you to call them out by name. I want you to repent if you haven't been the best example because the repenting is going to break the generational curse. Let me tell you something. Even if their other parents hasn't lived right, I want, I want you to sever the ties spiritually with that bloodline we're gonna sever the ties spiritually with wrong blood bloodlines so that we can walk in the fullness of what we need to walk in and then i've got two books i'm gonna suggest to you after we pray but we're not giving the enemy access to our children anymore we're not doing it. He did, we're not going to be permissive to let him just have, I don't care what their friends are doing. I don't care. I don't care. I, you're, you're, you're going to be the different household. So I want you to call your children, your bonus children. Even some of you are surrogates. Call your surrogate child out by name. Some of y'all stand in the gap. Some of y'all have God children. Call your God children out by name. Call, call the neighborhood children out by name. There are some kids that have parents that are just not good parents. We're going to call them out by name today. I have Javen, Jaleel, Jermaine, Judah, and Josiah. I have to call Riley as my goddaughter. I have Zaina. I got to call them by name because I'm believing the Lord to do a good work in them. I have children who are coming. I'm believing God to do a good work. We are going to call them by name this morning. Father God, we are believing you today, Lord God. We are believing you today, Lord God, for our children, Lord God, for the children that you've given us, for God, Father God, for the children that are coming, Lord God. We are believing you, Lord God. We are believing you, Lord God, for our children today, Lord God. Hey, Oroko, Shiababa, Ke, Oroko, Niat, Hayo, Robo, Shiata, Haye, Roko, Shiababa, Hakai, Roko, Shiababa. Lord God, we thank you for the gifts that you've given us, Lord God. We thank you for the gifts that you've given us. And we call them by name, Lord God. We call them king. We call them queen. We call them blessed. 
We call them saved. We call them sanctified. We call them filled. We call them redeemed. We call them resurrected. We call them revived. We call them, Lord God, by name, Lord God. We call them by name, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, that you are doing a greater work in them, Lord God. We call forth their good credit. We call forth their wives and husbands. We call them by name, Lord God. We call them by name. We thank you that they are successful. We thank you that they are healed. We thank you that they are doing well. We thank you that they are respectful. We thank you that they honor. We thank you that they have character. We thank you that they have integrity, Lord God. We call them by name, Lord God. We thank you that they have peace. We thank you that they have joy. We thank you that they have love. We thank you, Father God, for their faithfulness, Lord God. We thank you that they are good stewards. We call them by name, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God. We call them by name. We call them by name. We thank you that they are honest, Lord God. We thank you, Father God, that they seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and everything else is added unto them. We thank you, Father God, that they are saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost. We call them by name, Lord God. Yeshua, ke yororoko, hayeta yororoboshiana, na ke yororokoshita, hayeroroboshe, na ka yororokoshia, hayeroroboshia, hayeroboshia, hayeroboshia. We call forth their destinies, O Lord. We call forth their destinies, O Lord. We call forth their purpose, O Lord. We call forth their purpose, O Lord. Let it fall about their loins, O Lord. We thank you, O Lord. We call forth their purpose, O Lord. We call forth their future, O Lord. We call forth their purity, O Lord. We call forth their purity, O Lord. We thank you, O Lord. We call forth their purity, O Lord. We call forth their purity, O Lord. We thank you, 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 Lord. We thank you, Lord God. We call for their peace. We call for their sound mind, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, that they will not be tempted to do any ungodliness through peer pressure, through media, or through music, Lord God. We thank you, Father God. We thank you, Father God, that you're making their crooked places straight. We thank you that you're divinely aligning them with the word of God, Lord God. We call forth their name, O oh Lord. We call forth their name, O oh Lord. We thank you, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God. We thank you, Father God, for the preachers, for the teachers, for the ministers, for the workers, Lord God. We thank you, Father God, for the spheres of influence that they have. We call forth their favor, oh Lord. We thank you, Lord God. We thank you for divine intelligence, Lord God. We thank you for divine intelligence, Lord God. We thank you for restoring their name, oh Lord. Even if their name has been tarnished, Lord God, that you are restoring their name, oh Lord. We cancel every assignment of the enemy against them right now in the name of Jesus, oh Lord. We cancel every assignment of the enemy against them right now in the name of Jesus, oh Lord. We thank you, Father God. We loose, Father God, from their life, any spirit that doesn't lie, the spirit of homosexuality, Father God, the spirit of covetousness, Lord God, the spirit of greed, the spirit of gluedness, we loose that from their lives like that right now in the name of Jesus. And we bind to their lives, Lord God, the things of kingdom, the things of heavenly things. Let them be stuck to them, Lord God. Let their crooked places be made straight right now in the name of Jesus, Lord God. We call forth their name, O Lord. 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 May he make their crooked places straight. We call forth their name, O Lord. Hey, yo koshia rarabashe. Integrity and character. Integrity and character. I thank you, Lord God. Give these parents wisdom that they need for their children, O oh Lord. Let their blind eyes be open, Lord God. Let them not be a fool for their kids, Lord God. Let them walk in a boldness like never before, Lord God. Let them not be fearful to parent, Lord God. Let 
them not be fearful to parent, oh Lord. I thank you, oh Lord. Restore relationships, Lord God. I hear you, Lord. He is restoring relationships. Some of you need restored relationships with your children. He is restoring relationships with your children right now. He's restoring relationships. Some of y'all need restored relationships. He's restoring relationships. They will begin to honor you. They will begin to honor you. He's restoring relationships right now. He's restoring relationships. Some of you, somebody has told you your child wasn't going to excel academically. I'm telling you, he's giving them a divine intelligence. You're going to begin to see them excel and do well. They're going to break out of that old mindset. They're going to have new confidence to be and do well. They're getting ready to have a new confidence. He's showing me that. He's showing me that there's going to be a divine intervention for them in school. He's going to give them a new name. He's going to call them by name. They're going to have a new level of confidence to excel and do well in school. You're going to have the tools, the means, and the resources of what you need for them. He's going to provide you exactly what you need for them. Just ask him to provide you exactly what you need for them according to his will. I'm telling you, there's a divine intervention that's about to happen. There's a rest. He's going to restore some names. He's going to restore relationships. He's going to restore the broken relationships. I promise you he is. God is working on your behalf for your children. Call them by name. Call them by name. Don't call them by their problem. Call them by name. Restore, O oh Lord. Restore, O oh Lord. Even broken fellowship, even broken relationships. Restore, O oh Lord. I thank you that every generational curse, every assignment on your children and your children's children is severed. It's null. It's void. It's useless. It's brought to no effect. We send, an ass we send word to the enemy right now that every device and every tactic right now in the name of Jesus is cut off. Every assignment, every word cur curse is broken right now in the name of Jesus. Right now in the name of Jesus is severed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to tell you something too. I need to tell you because this is what's in my spirit. Some of you have not forgiven your own parents. Some of you have not forgiven your own parents for not being good parents. I need you to forgive your parents today. I need you to forgive your parents today so that this release can occur. You can't, God cannot move for you if you have unforgiveness in you. I need you to forgive some of you. Some, and I'm talking about some of your parents did some dirty things, but I need you to forgive your parents today. And you need to let it out your mouth. I forgive my mother. I forgive my father. I forgive my adopted parents. I forgive my grandparents. I need you to release forgiveness today so that this can flow. You cannot have unforgiveness in their heart. I need some of y'all to forgive their parent, their absent parent. If they had an absent parent and that person wasn't in their life, I need you to forgive them. If you're the absent parent, I need you to repent. I need you to repent. I need you to ask the Lord to restore the relationship. But forgiveness is going to have to occur so God can move. So you need to release. And I'm telling you, seal it in your heart. Let it go. Forgive your parents today so that your kids are not dealing with this. Release your parents from all the wrong that they've done. Let it go. I'm sorry they weren't good parents. We know this, but it's done. Guess what? You survived. And you may have had some things you had to overcome, but that's your testimony right now. Forgive your, you got to let that go. Don't talk to me no more. Don't talk about what your parents did. Absolutely. No more. No more. Don't talk about it no more. Don't talk about what your parents did no more. Don't bring it up. We're not bringing it up no more. We're not talking about it no more. We're going to forgive them right now in Jesus name. Father God, I release my parents 
from everything and anything they ever did to me. I release them. I forgive them. I let it go. I forgive my mother and father for everything that I thought they should have done, that they shouldn't have done. Every step parent I have, I forgive them and I release that, release them from it right now in the name of Jesus. I promise you, God is going to do a work He's going to do a work, but you got to make sure forgiveness is at the release. Release that mess. You've been holding on to that stuff and it's making your system toxic. You got a toxic system because you've been holding on to unforgiveness. Your prayers, your prayers cannot be answered if you have unforgiveness in your heart. Your prayers, you're holding up your prayers. Some of y'all been trying to figure out why something hasn't been answered for you. It's because you've had unforgiveness in your heart. Let that mess go. Even the absent parent, forgive him now. Forgive him. If you're a single mom, Lord, I forgive this man. I forgive this man. I forgive him. I forgive him. I don't know what he was going on. I don't know what happened. I forgive him, Lord. I forgive him. Lord, restore the relationship between him and my kids. I forgive him right now in the name of Jesus. If you're the absent parent, forgive yourself. I forgive myself for not being a good parent. I made some mistakes. I was foolish. I'm forgiving myself right now in the name of Jesus so that my kids don't have to deal with this. I, I, my kids don't have to deal with it. That's it. I need to recommend two books for you. The first book is the book Weird by Craig Groeschel. If you have not read the book Weird, you need to get the book Weird by Craig Groeschel. The second book that I want you to, to get is... Um, it's a confession book by Kathy Doris. I'm sorry. I thought I had it. I, raising, raising kids. We're going to drop the link for this. Confessions for Raising Winning Kids. You need to get this book. We'll drop the link for this. We'll drop the thing. Get Kathy's book. I'm talking about get this book. Her, you can order it. You can order it in tens. The book is only $3. There's confessions even in here for your kids, things they need to confess over themselves. You have got to start confessing over your kids. You've got to do the work for your kids so that your kids can be successful. We broke all gen all generational curses. Don't go back to no generational curse. Don't start talking about them. They're broken. They're loose. They're freed. They're severed. They're done. The blood of Jesus has went to work on our behalf, your kids are going to be new kids. If you'll just be in faith and believe. And even if it looks like they're not doing what they're supposed to be doing, I promise you it's going to come to pass. It's going to come to pass. You just don't give up on them in prayer. Now, let me confess over your kids today. I want to speak this out, out my mouth and you speak this out your mouth. You repeat after me. Father, I confess your word over my children. I confess that my children are taught of the Lord and great is their peace and undisturbed composure. My children grow in wisdom and stature and have favor with God and man. I have trained of my child in the way that they should go. And when they are old, they will not turn from it. Your angels keep charge over my children to accompany and defend them and preserve them in all their ways. You, Lord, are the refuge and fortress. You are their glory and the triumph of their heads. I confess that my children delight themselves in the Lord and you give them the desires of their heart. I confess that my children are willing and obedient and they eat the best of the land. I confess that my children obey their parents in the Lord. My children honor, esteem, and value as precious as their parents. For this is the first commandment with the promise, that it may be well with my children so that they can live a long life on earth. My children choose life and love you, Lord, and obey your voice and cling to you. You are their life and the length of their days. I plead the blood of Lord Jesus over my children, my grandchildren, my future grandchildren, my children that are not even my children and all that you have given, all those that you have given to me in my life. I thank you, Lord, for victory in the lives of my children. In Jesus name. Amen.
Whoo! In Jesus' name, amen. My God, I promise you, don't go back to the place of what they used to be. Your children are free. They are set free. You just believe God for them. You just believe God for them. And if you're co-parenting with another parent, if they start speaking something negative, you shut that down and you tell them, ah, 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 I'm praying over my child. I'm praying over my child. I'm praying over my child. I I'm praying. You don't let anybody bring to you anything. If the teacher wants to give you a report, shut that mess down. I, 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 I understand that their behavior may have not been pleasant, but you're not getting ready to speak this over my child. You shut that down like you shut it down. You don't allow that to go forth about your kids. I'm telling you. No more. This assignment for your kids has to be strategic. What you're doing for your kids has to be strategic. You cannot just haphazardly live any kind of way where your kids are concerned. It's time for a new thing to be done. It's time for a new place. So make sure you get these books. I promise you God is doing a new thing for you. Subscribe to my YouTube channel in the morning. I won't be on. We're not doing a special edition of Coffee and Conversation. Sunday, I'm going to upload, do the work to my YouTube channel. If you're not on the YouTube channel, you won't get to see it. So go subscribe to the YouTube channel. If this ministry has been a blessing to you, so see. I promise you, we out working in the community. Um, we have a family we're sponsoring for uh, Christmas. We have the Coleman School Project we're working on. This ministry has been a blessing. So into the ministry. She just dropped the link. Join me Thursday, December the 7th for Stories of Empowerment, Living Faith. There's a link for it. I will be speaking and sharing how my faith impacts everything that I do. Pillow Talk, December 2017. Let me tell you something. There are only nine spaces left for Pillow Talk. The last time I said it was going to sell out, my mouth spoke it and it sold out. If you are not registered for Pillow Talk December 7th and you thinking about it, you're going to be in trouble. You're going to be in trouble because I'm telling you, it's only nine spots left. Go now and get registered for Pillow Talk. I will not see you guys. We do not have a special guest in the morning. I will not see you in the morning. I will be back and I will upload to my YouTube channel, right? So go subscribe to the Coffee and Conversation. Invite your friends. You can get old videos on the YouTube channel. You can re-watch videos if you don't want to watch them. Go subscribe to that video because we're going to upload Sunday's inspiration. I love you guys so much. Like, you don't know how much I love you. Hoop love, I'll sing, I will. I'll, I'll, I'll get you more information on the Coleman School Project. The Coleman School Project, I've adopted a school. My church that I attend is adopting a school. See, I serve under a ministry also. Um, we're, we've adopted this school. They don't have playground equipment. They don't have things. These girls need mentors. These boys need mentors. And I'm just invading this school. I have this thing called MIA, Ministry in Action. I have to be the hands and feet of Jesus. Jesus out in this world. That's what my nonprofit sickle cell support services is. It's ministry in action. You can sow. We, we adopted a family for Christmas. You can sow into any of those projects so that we can be ministry in action in the streets. I love you guys so, so much. See you back here. I won't see you until Monday morning at 5 a.m. Invite someone to come in. I love that, Miss Vicky. I need that. Invite someone to come in to the broadcast. Go be loved today. You got to be God's hands. You got to be his hands in action. That's why you can't be tugging the rope. Because if you tug in the rope and your hands are damaged, you can't be out being him in action and God needs to see you in action. It's not enough for you just to serve at your church. You got to get out and serve in your community. I love you so much. I will see you back here Monday morning at 5 a.m. Don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel. Love, peace, and blessings.